stimulated by auditory stimulating the mTOR pathway. So things like wake and, and casein protein, they have the high, the highest naturally occurring positive factors. Meaning they will be if you were just comparing proteins in its natural state, they are the most effective sources of protein. Right? And then in that case, animal proteins, specifically milk-based proteins, are significantly better than plant-based proteins. But it's the year 2023. Almost every supplement is fortified, and rightfully so, because we understand that these can have some positive effects, right? You can see things like creatine added to them, fractional amino acids added to them. When you guys go choose your protein, the one thing I want you to look at, and even if it's plant-based, is that it, at the very least, has to have a 2 to 3 gram leucine content inside of the protein. So if you want pea protein, soy protein, hemp protein, which is actually pretty good, be sure that when you look at the nutritional label or the, or the supplement facts, you're looking for that 2 to 3 gram content of leucine. Then you know, okay, I'm getting a good dose of protein, but I'm also getting a good amount of leucine, which will help me further synthesize this protein to make it work for me and give me whatever adaptation I'm looking for, in most cases, name body mass, right? So again, protein is a very important supplement. This is probably one of the ones we would supplement the most because eating that much protein, depending on the individual, could be difficult. So just be sure that the content of protein inside is around this. That way you're not wasting your money because Whole Foods over here for us sells plant-based protein with only 14 grams of protein and it's $60 for a very small container. That's a waste of money. Pay $60, you can get a five-pound type of protein from Ultimate Nutrition, and it's going to give you 25 grams of hydrolyzed whey protein. Perfect dose. Now, let's look at creatine. Creatine is the most researched supplement in the world till this day. Right? It has various different benefits, and, and typically it comes in these forms here. It'll come as a powder, or it'll come as capsules. Recently, they've, they've come as chewable, they're gummies, but I promise you they taste disgusting. Don't waste your time with that. We actually just had them as one of our vendors, which, again, don't recommend it. But creatine, creatine has various different benefits. Now, when I was younger, creatine was sold as a bodybuilding supplement. The idea was take creatine, get bigger muscle. It swells your muscle with water, then it's going to make you look bigger. But muscle building is probably the last consideration in the sense of taking creatine. Now, it does happen. It, it does help you build muscle, but not for what people think it actually, like, for, for, the, for the, the reason people think it, it, it doesn't. Creatine's three... Guys, if you want to join, make sure you guys go either click the link that's in this description or go to Phil's Instagram bio and it's completely free. It's a free webinar that we're doing going over nutrition, sports, performance, and pretty much everything that you need. And then we're also doing a live Q&A. So make sure if you guys want to join, click the link in the description and join the Zoom room or go to Phil's Instagram bio and join the Zoom room there. Either way, this isn't where you wanna be. Uh, this, this YouTube live is just to let you guys know about it, but it is completely free. Go ahead and click the uh, the link and we'll see you guys there. To create energy, we turn it to ADP because we remove an inorganic phosphate. Now what creatine does, is it readily gives us another phosphorus from phosphocreatine to resynthesize ATP, meaning that the rephosphorylation of ADP